Hi there folks, this is Adam with 8 Badge Gaming coming to you today with the fourth and final gameplay video in our Northern Garboder series. So we are just going to go ahead and hop right on into it there now. So we're waiting in our queue now uh, for our next game. So far we've had some pretty good games. We're sitting at an overall 2-in-1 record. And it looks like today we've gotten paired up against a Dragon Fighting and Psychic deck. So I'm curious as to what this might be. Now, it could be Ultra Necrozma plus some sort of fighting tech. Uh, I mean, because we're looking at the Dragon Psychic there. Uh, we did lose the flip, so we're going to have the second turn rather than the uh, first turn. That does give us the first attack, which can be applicable at times. Um, we actually have the Noibat and Trubbish right off the bat here. Um, so that's actually good for us. We don't need to use the Ultra Ball to go for a Lele, I don't think. Uh, I actually don't know if we're going to use the Cynthia on our first turn, because we have the setup in hand to just really make some hate on our opponent. Um, and if we act like we're stuck, then they aren't likely to do an end or something of the sort. Now, that depends on if they go for an end here or not. They're discarding uh, two Psychic Energies to an Ultra Ball here. So they're trying to get ready to go here. They want to be able to suit this up as quickly as possible. We've got a Dawn Wings Necrozma. So this is definitely a Malamar variant. But I am curious to see what the fighting tech is. I think it might be a Mars Shadow DX. I know some decks have been running that lately as essentially a fighting tech against Zoroark. Um, wow. They had a very great hand for the setup here. The Choice Band, 3 energy, 2 to discard to the Ultra Ball, 1 to put down onto the Necrozma. Lele to be able to go get the Pokemon they need, Inke, uh, or rather the trainer that they need. They're going for a Lily to just draw straight 8 on their first turn. And they had two Malamars in their opening hand too. Like, I, I actually don't know if they could have tried to go for a better hand here than they actually had. I think that's pretty sculpted here. Um, so what I think we want to do, they do need to be able to get their Inke out of the active, which they can do right now with the Dawn Wings. So let's go for Lele. That was actually a really good top deck on our side because it allows us to not only see what's prized, but to go for a Bridget. Um, so let's have a quick look here. Uh, so let's see. We have our Bridget. We have our Ace of Rollas. Oh, actually, it looks like we've got one Bridget prized. Uh, we've got our Guzmas, Ends, and Sycamores. Uh, we already have a Trubbish in play. A Toxin is prized. We have a Noibat in play already, and Noib Thrones are there. Uh, Mysterious Treasure. We have all three. Our Rescue Stretcher. It looks like actually both of our Hammers are prized. Um, we have an Ultra Ball in hand. Uh, we have our choice bands. It looks like we have two floatstones prize as well. So this isn't a great set of prizes for us. Um, we're going to go for the Bridget here either way. And we're going to use the Bridget to go for Trubbish and Noibat. Noibat? Um, because we're expecting the first Noibat here to be KO'd. So we're actually going to put our energy here now on the Noibat, and we're going to go ahead and pass it back to our opponent. So we have the ability to get the Garbodor Lock on our second turn. Um, we have a Cynthia to be able to just go deep, essentially. Um, he had both Malamars, wow, off the Lily. I, I don't know if we can beat this. This is a pretty nut hand here overall. He's having a fully fueled Dominus Necrozma turn two. So this is not looking great for us folks. Now we're not going to pack it in just yet as we saw with our last game against Greninja Break. Sometimes we are able to just make that huge comeback. But our opponent is just going to town here. Um, Sycamore, let's see what they're discarding. A bunch of energy and a Beast Ring. So, Beast Ring, oh. That's interesting as well. And we do have Ultra Necrozma. So it is the Ultra Necrozma variant. It's not the regular Necrozma variant here for sure. We already confirmed that with Dragon typing. Um, 
and they've gotten more energy into the discard here now. So they very likely have a choice band. Um, so let's see, we're going to promote the Noibat, because why not? Uh, we did get another energy, so let's go energy, uh, Floatstone, Garboder. We're going to Cynthia, as much as I kind of wish it was an N, um, to put our opponent down cards. We did get a Mysterious Treasure, which I think we'll straight up use. We want to keep the Rescue Stretcher for now. We want to keep our Draw Supporters. So I think we're actually going to Mysterious Treasure here, discarding the Ultra Ball. And we're going to go for one of our Noiverns. And we, I wish we had the choice band so we can match this up as damage over time, but we're going to go for a distort here. So they're not going to be able to field blower off the Garboder. They're not going to be able to use their abilities this turn, period. Now, if they have a Guzma, they're going to be able to Guzma up, but then they're still not going to be able to use their abilities to get whatever they put in the active out of the active unless they have a choice band. So we see a manual attachment of a Psychic Energy here. Um, we're seeing 120 damage hit. So let's see, we did get the Wishful Baton, which is good for us. Because now we can go Psychic on, let's see. We only have two items in discard. So I think we do the Psychic on our Noibat. Keep the items shut down with Wishful Baton. We put down our extra Noibat here, and we it's just as well to use the Rescue Stretcher to shuffle the Noibat back in before we Sycamore. So we're going to Sycamore here. We did get another Noivern, another Wishful Baton, um, Choice Band. So Choice Band actually lets us have a pretty good setup next turn to be able to take a KO on that Dawn Wings. So let's go for a Distort. We're hitting for 50. Now, our opponent still needs to KO at least three Pokemon on us. So them taking a one prize didn't really help them overall. They're just going straight here for Dark Flash. And we're going to move this energy straight on to our... Noivern here. Uh, yep, yeah, so both onto the Noivern. We're going to put our Noivern into the active. So let's see. Now the question is, what do we want to change this up? Do we want to promote something else and then start going for damage over time? Because what we can do here is we can keep the distort ability lock going. Um, let's see, let's see, let's figure out what we want to do. I don't think we want to discard anything in hand. I think what we're going to do is, let's see, Guzma up, we're hitting for 80, so it's going to be three turns worth. I think actually we just go for a distort. He's going to get a KO here, and now we're just set up prize-wise, and they're still not able to put their items down. So they're still not able to use Field Blower. They're not able to suit up anything unless they're doing it manually, which we're totally fine with. Now, what we might want to do is Guzma up one of their benched Pokemon here to be able to distort, to keep the lockdown going. And this is the great combination of the Distort plus the Garbotoxin here. Because they're just not able to get out of the scenario here right now. Their Field Blower essentially doesn't exist in their hand right now. So what they're going to be going for is Energy to suit up manually. Um, and they did hit it on the Ultra Necrozma here. So let's see. Ultra Necrozma will hit for... If he attacks right now, it hits for 100, discards the Psychic. If he attaches two on, he's hitting for 180. So let's go ahead and we're going to Guzma up the Ultra Necrozma, promote our own Floatstone Garboder. We're going to retreat into our Noivern. Um, we're going to put an energy on this Trubbish. We're going to then 
figure out our next step. So I think what we want to do is we're just going to keep going with the distorts. So we distort here now, hit for 80. So this is going to be damage over three turns, essentially. Um, we're not able to just straight two shot here. Now he is discarding energy. He's going for 100 damage. Um, oh, that actually means we should have attached the energy to the Noibat last turn. So let's attach an energy to the Noibat here. And we want to figure out what we want to do here. Now, technically, we could promote into the Noibat, go for a heads flip on our mysterious beam. But what I think we want to do is actually Guzma up here. And we're going to retreat. And let's actually just go for a distort here again. So distort for 80. Now, again, this is going to be three total attacks. And we do have another Guzma plus an Isarola. So he's not going to be able to go for the straight KO here at the moment. Um, what I think we want to do, he didn't attach an energy for turn, so he's not going to be retreating. Um, we did get another Ultra Ball, so what I think we want to do is attach a Psychic Energy here. We're going to Ultra Ball, Pitching, Wishful Baton, and the Ultra Ball. We're going to go for another Noivern. We're going to put it down on this Noibat. And let's see, we still are at two attacks. So let's retreat into this Noivern. We're going to Acerola the damaged Noivern to hand. So we don't have to worry about a potential KO there. Throw this Noivern down, add the choice band here because we will need it on a Noivern overall. Go for a distort and put it up to 160 damage here. So now our plan next turn is actually going to be attaching an energy to our active Noivern. Guzma in up the benched Ultra Necrozma. Then what that gets us in a position to do is when we distort, the max amount of damage that he can do right now is 100. So let's go for an energy attachment. We're going to evolve this Noibat into a Noivern, again to give free retreat. We're going to Guzma up the Ultra Necrozma, put up our own Noivern, we are going to retreat. And now this actually sets us up for Boom Bust to actually take a four prize knockout next turn. And I messed it up. I did a click on the wrong one. And now he has the ability to potentially just KO us next turn. So I made the mistake. Um, it was supposed to be a distort. And we were going to go for a four prize turn the next turn. Hopefully we don't get punished. Um, we're likely seeing, uh, what, uh, Lele here? Nope, and we failed to find. How many cards do we have left in this deck? 17 cards, three prizes. We need to take two prizes overall. If he doesn't put up his Don Wings, we're still going to be able to take the KO. Ooh, a Mewtwo, a pressure Mewtwo. So as long as you're active Pokemon, they deal 20 less damage. Hmm, that's actually interesting. Now, it still will be a KO on the Donwings here. Unless they get the energy on it this turn, they go for the full damage. So, we very much did mess up our chances here. I think we just punted this whole game. Hopefully, we're going to be able to recover here. Our opponent does need to still take two knockouts to be able to win. Uh, we have used our Guzma. Um, they are just likely going for their GX attack this turn. We see an energy being attached here. Oh, he's going for the Filch. Right, because he doesn't have the ability to attach his stuff. So I think we just go for Sonic Volume. Or rather, Boom Bust here. Yeah, we're just going to go for Boom Bust and take our KO. So Boom Bust takes a KO on our benched Donwings Necrozma, and we were able to actually take the win there.
So surprisingly enough, regardless of our punks, me not realizing that carbotoxin was still active <laughs> with them having no field blower is exactly what got us there. So thankfully, we were still able to take the win. We were able to show just how powerful the combination of distort plus garbotoxin can be. Some decks just get turned off by it. They can't function, and we were able to see that there. Our opponent's only chance was to be able to manually attach energy, and they'd already discarded a significant amount, uh, either to Ultra Balls, to Sycamores, to already having it knocked off on KO Pokemon. We were just able to take control of that game, and we were so far ahead that even with our punts, they weren't able to make a recovery. So this has been a pretty sweet game series. Our final record with Noivern is 3-1. and one which is pretty good overall. It just shows the strength of Garbotoxin plus item lock through Distort is definitely there. Now, we will discuss some of the changes that we will want to consider going forward uh, in our video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that if you want to see what we would change, how we uh, feel about our record overall, and what we might want to upgrade in the deck or swap out entirely. So, as always, we do greatly appreciate your viewership here at 8Badge Gaming. We also appreciate any feedback that you give, so feel free to message us with anything relating to our videos, to playing Pokemon in general, uh, for the TCG itself, or even recommendations on decks, ha asking for assistance to help build your own decks, etc. We're always going to be happy to help. With that said, this is Adam with 8Badge Gaming, signing off.